Praise the Lord. This is your time. Time of transformation. Time of healing. Time of miracle. And your time of salvation. Ready? What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We believe that tonight will be a special night. Spectacular for everyone. Glorious for everyone. And we're asking tonight. Nobody will miss your miracle in Jesus' name. Touch everyone and turn every life around for the better. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, the Lord will meet you where you are. You will encounter the Lord in a powerful, mighty way tonight in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you an interesting story in the Bible. It's a story of divine touch. And it's a story of transformation. God taking over your life. Changing everything that needs to be changed. Making you better. Lifting you higher. And putting a miracle in your life tonight. We're looking at divine touch for our full transformation. This the story is in Genesis chapter 32. And I'm reading from verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled with him a man until the breaking of the day. In verse 25. It says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he took the hollow of his thigh. He touched. That's what will happen to you tonight. It will touch your life. It will touch your body. It will touch your soul. It will touch everything pertaining to you tonight. He touched the tie of his body. And then we're told that the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint. As he wrestled with him. And in verse 26... And he said, let me go. For the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go. Except you bless me. He had a determination. He wanted blessing. I'm sure that's why you came tonight. You also have determination. And you have expectation that tonight the Lord will bless you. And you are saying, I will not leave except I am blessed. That's the story of the man. And this story will be repeated in your life tonight. The divine touch for our full transformation you'll be transformed tonight it will change your life tonight 
he will put a miracle in your life three things we're looking at today number one passionate impulse importunate request for transformational for transforming touch importunate prayer importunate request passionate like wrestling with the angel look at number two no, uh, it's a practical in death repentance for true transformation God wants to do something in your life and tonight it will take place and you need to do something so that that thing God wants to do will not miss you number three personal incredible restoration of total transformation personal as others are getting their miracles you will get your own the person by your right the person by your life led getting miracle you must get your own lives being transformed salvation for people around you blind eyes open are opening around you in front of you by your side behind shout of miracle then you there you'll have your personal incredible restoration of a great miracle. of total transformation that you as a person personal not just looking at other people hearing other people looking at other people getting miracle but you will get your own personal divine touch from on high personal incredible restoration of total complete full transformation look at number one you will meet a man here passionate expecting that he was going to receive something incredible something marvelous something undeniable but he came with passionate importunity passionate, uh, passionate prayer making a request before the lord he knew the situation of his life he knew the need of his life and he said i have come i will not be denied those are the kinds of people that have transformation the people that say here i am i come i will not be denied and they make their request before the lord passionate and importunate and they want that divine touch that will change them that will transform them that will turn their lives around for the better look at the story again Genesis chapter 32 reading from verse 24 and jacob was left alone there comes a time in your life when you have to separate yourself from the crowd 
and a large people community following after him and because of that multitude he could not really express his mind his heart unto the lord and jacob was left alone that has to come tonight forget about other people and say this is my day this is my time and you come before the Lord all alone. The Lord requires you to separate yourself from any sin and every sin that will take your attention away from the Lord. And there wrestled a man with him. Sometimes prayer is like wrestling. The devil is saying, no, you will not be saved. And you say, yes, I'll be saved. Your mind is saying, no, you will not be healed. You say, yes, I'm going to be healed. All the things around you, they seem to say, you'll not get up from the ground. You say, yes, I will get up. But you know, the people who are hands down, the people who cannot pray, the people who cannot make their definite passion and request known unto the Lord, the people who say, well, if I have all right, if I don't have all right, many of those people don't get much from the Lord. Those who are indifferent and neutral. And those who don't have any drive within them, any passion within them. A little wind will blow them up. But the people will say, if I have to wrestle, I wrestle. I must be blessed. I must be transformed. I must have a divine touch. Like Jacob, you tonight, you'll be blessed. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. There is something to touch in your life. And the hand of God from heaven will touch that part. You understand? The hollow of his thigh. When it was taught, that hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint. As he wrestled with him, a change was taking place. Jacob needed a change between him and Esau. There was hatred. He needed transformation from hatred to love. Between him and Esau, there was fear. He needed transformation from the fear of his brother, the fear of the future, the fear of life. He needed to change from fear to faith. In, in Jacob's life, there was a kind of loneliness and loneliness. He wanted fellowship. He had no fellowship. Now he was left alone. Transformation. Total change. 
from that loneliness to fellowship he knew he was a cheat that was a man grabbing this and grabbing that he was a thief he had taken and stolen the birthright from Esau and because of that many things negative have been following after him he needed transformation from being a cheat to being an honest man that's how we came so that that change will take place in our lives you've been a thief you've been cheating other people you've been grappling what belongs to others you need a transformation from being a cheat to being an honest person he was a slave he was a slave to Laban. And Laban changed his wages ten times over. He needed to become totally free. So that God will save. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. At this time now, he was just a slave to every scene around. He was a captive. He needed to become a conqueror. That will conquer his evil, sinful nature. That's why he said, if I don't have this change, if I don't have this transformation, the hatred with Esau will continue. The fear of Esau will continue. The character of cheating will continue. And the captivity in slavery will continue. The bad evil nature of grabbing and grabbing will continue that's why he was desperate he needed transformation through conversion he needed transformation in his character he needed transformation of his captivity and he said, I must have transformation. Heaven recognized where he was. That's why God in heaven sent an angel to wrestle with him. And the angel did not have to say, Jacob, Jacob, where are you? Heaven knows where you are. The hatred that needs to be changed to love. The slavery that needs to be changed to freedom. And the grabbing, covetous life that needs to be changed to a giving, helpful life. Your heart that needs to be changed. Your life that needs to be changed. Your character that needs to be changed. Your attitude that needs to be changed. Jacob was a schemer. He schemed the Lord with Laban. And Laban in turn schemed in his life. As he schemed to get what belongs to Laban. Laban schemed to take what belongs rightfully to him. And Jacob that night said, enough is enough. All this scheming life. 
all these fleshly lies all this cannot lie all this trampling on others to get what I want he said I know I need transformation that's why he was passionate that's what he was importunate saying I will not let you go except you change me and tonight is the night of your change from negative to positive all those negative attitudes negative actions negative behavior negative direction in life and all the negative pride in your life you understand all those times a Jacob encountered Esau a Jacob encountered Laban even when he was a kind of dribbled he wanted to have Rachel he was given Leah Jacob was a strong minded man he never cried he never cried that man was a man that stood on the evil that he did and there was no softness his heart was hard do you remember the story when he met Esau for the first time on record he embraced Esau and Jacob cried his heart has been transformed his life has changed tonight is your turn passionate importunate request for transforming touch and look at Luke chapter 11 and I'm reading there from verse 5 Luke chapter 11 verse 5 and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves look at verse 6 in verse 6 for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to search before him you remind you remember Jacob he saw is coming with 400 men and I don't have an army to match his own I have a need. I'm passionate about it. This night must not go except there's a transformation. And this person that Jesus was telling about in the story, in the parable, a friend of mine has come unto me and I have nothing to set before him. In verse 7, it says, And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. He came and was asking, and a friend said, Trouble me not. And the angel told Jacob, Let me go. 
And Jacob said, we've been wrestling all night. I can't see the result and the outcome of the wrestling. I've been making requests. I've not got an answer. I will not let you go. You came from heaven to bless me. I must have the blessing. This woman said, I came tonight. I must get something. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. He had nothing because of his importunity. He will have everything. Transformation from nothing to everything. Transformation from no bread to many loaves of bread. Transformation from scarcity to plenty. Transformation from sadness to joy. When you come before the Lord and you come with a purpose and you come with a passion and you come with importunity and you're not just attending GCK. You want something out of that GCK. And you want something tonight. Transformation. Transformation. You came with sickness. You go back home with healing. You came as a sinner. You are going back home with salvation. You came here sorrowful and sad. You are going back home glad, happy, and joyful. The joy of salvation will come into your life today. Because of his importunity. He will rise and give him as many as he needed. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and I say unto you, the Lord is talking to you. Where are you? The Lord is talking to you. He will do something marvelous in your life tonight. Great transformation in your life tonight. A great change in your life tonight. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. What are you asking tonight? Salvation, forgiveness, healing, deliverance, transformation, change of heart change of life you want impossibility in your life to be changed to possibility you are the next one to be blessed tonight ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find you will find your blessing tonight Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Unto me. Unto me. Praise the Lord. Your own miracle has arrived. We're looking at number two. In number two, we're looking at 
practical in-depth repentance for true transformation Jacob had said I will not let you go until except you bless me but he had something to do before that blessing Genesis chapter 32 verse 27 and he said unto him what is thy name what is thy name why that kind of question when he wanted to get blessing by a crafty method and he went to his father isaac and isaac said my son you want the blessing what is your name and jacob said i am esau your son and he, and he stole the blessing by telling a lie i am esau your firstborn son come near here to feel his hand. He has stolen the skin of a goat to cover up. Come on, let me embrace you. He has stolen the garment of Esau so that the smell will be like this is Esau. And the angel from heaven said, What's your name? If you keep the stolen blessing, the stolen identity, if you keep what you got by craft, by scheming, by deception, by lying. The transformation you are looking for will just be eluding you. And so the angel said, Tell me now, like you told your father, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. From within his heart with all sincerity with all honesty he made a true confession he dropped the lie of the old lie the old man is a deceiver the natural man is a deceiver will deceive by appearance will deceive by animal skin on the hand will deceive by a deceptive voice from him but now to have the blessing of transformation from heaven will drop all the lies of the past all the deception of the past that's what is called repentance he turned around he dropped the wrong deceptive identity when you come to the lord and you want the transformation from heaven a change of heart a change of life a change of character a change in your health situation a change in everything around you and within you you drop the past and then you take up the new he said i am jacob the Lord is touching your life tonight. 
the Lord is turning you around tonight. All deception in action. All deception in attitude. All deception by vocalizing that lie. All deception by quietly smiling. You don't talk, but you smile. But you nod. You are saying yes by your action. When it is no, in reality, when you want the blessing of the Lord, that's a practical, in depth repentance for you to have that true transformation. Acts chapter 5. Reading here from verse 30. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. He wants to be the prince in your life. The king of your life. The lord of your life. He wants to be your savior. Tonight he'll be your savior. He'll forgive all your sins. He cleanse all your sins. He will save you from the penalty of hell. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Will be separated forever and ever from the God of heaven. The penalty of sin is hell and as you want a change from the penalty of hell to the provision of heaven christ becomes the prince the lord the king and the savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins what he's telling you now and he gives you genuine and true repentance and then no lies anymore no deception anymore in Acts chapter 17 reading from verse 30 Acts chapter 17 verse 30 at the times of days, ignorance, God winked at. Jacob was ignorant of the method of getting blessing. He thought, I don't have to wait for God. I don't have to allow him to fulfill the prophecy that had been given to my mother before I was born. I'll do it myself. I'll take it myself. I will use fleshly method, human method. I've had other people do it like that. And I am going to get it by my effort. He realized later he couldn't get that salvation by his own effort. He couldn't get the divine touch by his own effort. He couldn't get the fulfillment of the prophecy by his own fleshly canal method. He was ignorant of the ways of the Lord. 
At this time of repentance, the times of this ignorance, God winked out. But now commanders all men everywhere to repent. Now God commands all men from the time of Genesis unto this time everywhere to repent. That divine touch will come through repentance. That transformation will come through repentance. The forgiveness will come through repentance. The salvation will come through repentance. The faith will be activated and the faith will work through repentance. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Jacob did not realize that everything that had been happening to him was judgment. The Lord that promised him at Bethel. The place where you lie, I will give it unto you. I will take you to where you are going and bring you back. I will be with you. I will not leave you until I've done everything I promised you. And so, Jacob went with that promise. He got to Laban. And when he got to his house, they made a deal, first of all, on who to marry. He was deceived like he deceived his father. What he sowed, he was reaping. He never realized it was judgment. And then, okay, begging, I'll pay you this, you do that. Laban changed in a few days. Another, okay, let's make a new deal. Ten times over. He was deceived. The wages were changed. The Lord was telling him, God will judge sin. But he did not understand. And was going on and on. Every day was getting nearer to the final judgment. Until this decisive time of repentance. And the Lord is telling us that judgment is not only in the world, it's in the world beyond. The things that have been happening. No, it's not Laban. It's judgment. It's not the sheep, the goats, and the cattle. It's judgment. And the Lord was trying to call him to attention. And the Lord is calling you to attention tonight. So that you will not meet the final judgment on that appointed day. In which he will judge men by the man whom he has ordained. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Christ died. Why? To bear your sin. He was buried. 
but he didn't remain there beyond three days on that third day he rose again so that he can now present to you salvation and now by his stripes you are healed you are blessed you are turned around a new life now comes to you because he died he was buried and he rose again the Lord now wants you to believe in him and to understand that the divine touch comes because of him the divine transformation comes because of him the change of life the change of destiny comes because of him tonight it will turn your life around it will change your destiny as you repent as you turn to the lord as you believe on the lord that divine transformation of destiny will come to you in jesus name we're coming to point number three now personal incredible restoration of total transformation personal as you give yourself to the lord personal as you turn around from darkness to the light personal as you decide to follow christ i have decided not we have decided to follow jesus no i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back personal incredible restoration what happened to jacob what took place in the life of jacob the result that came in the life of jacob incredible before that time god was the god of abraham the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. Something incredible now is going to happen. Jacob is going to be joined to Abraham and Isaac. God is now going to become the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the god of jacob and that name will not be joined there will be three of them and from that time on all through the old testament and even jesus in the new testament when he said god is not the god of the dead but of the living then Jesus answered, because God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The blessing of Abraham had been restored unto him. Internal change. Outward change. Lifetime change. Eternal change. You see, healing that's for the earth here. Salvation that's for eternal. And Jacob was now going to have that blessing. Internal, external, eternal. Incredible restoration for him. And that's what the Lord is bringing to you tonight. 
personal incredible restoration of total total transformation transformation in speech never told any lie anymore after that time he went around and check up and the Lord changed the name to Israel it was an internal change and a change in attitude he himself also hated Esau I got the bus right from him I overcame was a proud man but now the Lord humbled him he touched the hollow of his thigh he was now limping humility had come instead of pride and now he also lived a long life Pharaoh said how old are you he said the years of my pilgrimage 130 I was still alive still living on he had fellowship with the Lord now and had revelations from the Lord and now in heaven he will save you tonight. I said he will save you tonight. He will write your name in heaven. When you leave this world, you will go to heaven. Change in the heart. Change in his life. Change in his destiny. And of course, Tonight, you are getting healed. Incredible. Great restoration. Personal restoration. Of total transformation. He says in uh, that verse 28, Genesis 32. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men. Do you see the transformation there? When he was with Laban, as a man, you don't have any power with Laban. Can dribble your life can oppress your life can change your wages but now transformation has come you have now become a prince now you have power with God authority with God uh, you understand authority with God when you read Genesis Genesis, uh, you know, uh, Jacob was about going to heaven. And he said, called all the sons here for me. Power, authority with God. Said Reuben, this is what your future will be. Simeon, this is what your future will be. And uh, Judah, that's what your future will be. Jacob, Manasseh, Ephraim, this is what your future will be. That man had power, authority with God. Total transformation has now taken place. And with men and has prevailed that's the transformation that happened to him that's the transformation that is going to happen to you everybody say amen yeah. Psalm 
51 verse 12 in Psalm 51 verse 12 restore unto me the joy of thy salvation restore unto me the joy of thy salvation that's what we're asking for tonight the restoration of the original salvation thy salvation God has only one kind of salvation the salvation that sets you free from sin the, the salvation that sets you free from the old past life any other kind of salvation is not God's salvation Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. The salvation that upholds you that you don't go back to the old life. It's yours tonight. I said it's yours tonight. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. In your brain, health. Your eyes, health. Your ears, health. Darkness will vanish away. Deafness will vanish away. Swelling will be taken away. Every good healing you need comes tonight. Because he, the God of heaven, will restore health unto you. I will heal thee of thy wounds. Says the Lord wound in your intestine ulcer will vanish away cancer will vanish away bleeding inside will vanish away every incurable disease will be healed tonight your time has come my time has come because they call thee an outcast transformation will happen you'll not be an outcast anymore saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after people might have thrown your name away. You are going to become significant to God to make your country from tonight. Your transformation time has now come. My transformation time has come. Where are you? My transformation time has come. It's bowed. And I is closed. It's bowed and I is closed. The Lord has come to you tonight. He's right there by your side. He wants to forgive your sin. He wants to change your past. He wants to lift you up. He wants to give you a new life. It's bowed and eyes closed. You're passionate tonight. You're making your request tonight. You're saying, yes, that's the transformation I want. That's the new life I want. That's the salvation I want. Wherever you are, please raise up your hand. 
Amen. God bless you. Amen. The Lord has seen you there. Your transformation is now coming from heaven. He will forgive every sin you ever committed in your life. It will change your destiny. Where are you again? Raise up that hand. Everywhere, everywhere, raise up the hand. Online, over the television, over the radio, everywhere, raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Amen. Stand up for transformation. Stand up for forgiveness. Stand up for salvation. Stand up for blotting out everything in your past. Stand up for the new life in Christ. While you are standing up, tell the Lord in a few words that you are sorry for every evil sin you have done in the past. You must turn away from all the past evil things you have done. All the past deception. All the past gambling. All the past rushing after taking water belongs to other people. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. I'm sorry for the past. I want your forgiveness. I want your salvation. I want the new life. Tell the Lord, He'll give you that new life now. Divine touch. Now, touch does not take one hour. Doesn't take one day. Immediately, instantaneously. The transforming touch comes upon you. Accept it now. Believe it now. Lord, I believe. You have said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever means you. And you are calling upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be forgiven shall be saved shall have the divine transformation say Lord I have asked ask and it shall be given unto you that's what I'm seeking seek and thou shalt find knock and it shall be opened unto you Everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone. 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 Thank the Lord and say, Lord, I believe I am saved. I believe I am forgiven. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. You are faithful God. You love everyone giving themselves to Christ right now. According to your promise, forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. Blot out all their sin. Give them the transformation, the change right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. They are saved. They are forgiven. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Another brilliant and vibrant Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on standing. I can't sell us are there. Very briefly, they will give you the cut you feel. And that's how we finish that and come back. Your healing is guaranteed by heaven tonight. I'm moderating over here to please take over. Yes, the counselors are helping you to connect with the Lord. Give them the correct name. What is your real name? How do people know you? Write that name down. Then your address. Where do you stay? For instance, are you in Bepanda here? Are you living by Karefu Ajib? Or you are living beside Mbopi Market? If there is a bakery, Boulangerie Zepol, are you living around there? Are you not too far from Meno? Are you in Dobo? Are you in Peka Katos? You put your, your address there. Tell them I'm beside the Catholic Church. I am in this Karefu. Then you describe how they can get to you. The convener will be praying for you because you have received the word of God. He wants you to continue with the Lord. He has told us today that Jacob did not go back to the old life. Then we have received promises from the Lord that there's going to be miracles to night. Just that which the convener has declared. I am a living witness. Many of us here, we are living witnesses. His Excellency said here that though the place was full of water, there were people there that cannot give up. That knows how to deal with it. The rain was coming just like this time that you are giving your life to Christ. And he spoke to the rain. And the rain obeyed. So just give your information. And be ready. Because this night, your miracle will not pass you by. I thought I would hear amen. And your expectations will not be cut off. We have lunch hour tomorrow with Jesus. And it will be at 3 p.m. Behind this stage, there is a big conference hall there. So those who are giving their life to Christ now, tomorrow at 3 p.m. PM. 3 p.m. dot. Make sure you are there. And they will give you revelations on how to continue. Please give your correct address. Give your telephone number. And those online, please you will feel your form. Fill in your name. And you will be connected with the Lord. In fact, there are 
numbers there that if you feel you will get connected with the Lord and they will continue to pray for you they will continue to guide you and we are going to have a believer's banquet on the 2nd of June that time is going to be special. Come there and fellowship with the Lord. You are going to have a message from the convener. On that Sunday, in all countries of the world, they have it in the nearest deeper life churches close to you. In Douala, in Cameroon here, you will have it in all the regions, in the far north, in the north, in Adamawa, in the center, the west, northwest, southwest, littoral here, and south as well as the east. In all those regional headquarters, and in some districts, you are going to have this believer's banquet. There, you will understand the way of God very well. Then in Douala, it is going to take place in all the groups of districts. In the Peka, that is uh, Peka 14, the Deeper Life Bible Church there. Then in Dokoti, in the Dokoti Central Church over there. Then in Daido, in Bonabo there. Then in New Bell, you have it at Grand Canyon. Then in Village, that is for Bonodis, you pay, and Doc Passy, they have it in uh, uh, UP, just after the fish market. Then in Bonaberry, you have it for Bonaberry 1 in the chapel. For Bonaberry 2 in Mabanda. Bonaberry 3 in the campus fellowship at Bambutus. Then Bonaberry 4, you have it behind All Saints Balingua College, Bonaberry. Via Carifu Music. After Fermankam, you will see All Saints there, at the, the, the location there. Then in Susa, in Mundani Quarter. So everywhere you are, there's going to be this convert banquet. Please give your correct telephone number. Keep standing. Don't sit down if they have not attended to you. The convener is coming back. He has told you. And that is how it happened last year. He's not going to touch you. He's not going to give you water to drink or to spray. He's not going to give you oil to rub. He will not give you bracelet. He's not going to give you any apron. As it was in the days of old, he will declare the word of God here and you will receive your miracle wherever you are. In the front, on my left, in the middle, uh, on my right, and at the back. I know there are people behind. At the road there, your miracle will meet you there. I said your miracle will meet you there. Everyone here will receive a miracle. I say if you believe that, say amen. So cancel us. If you are finished on this site, you should indicate and cancel us as you finish canceling them. Stay there. Because I know. I said I know. I said I know. That amen is not commensurate. When the 
power will be released from here. You will hear the shouts of joy. And we are all going to join them to rejoice. He told you that it will happen tonight. So just give your name. Just give the right address. Uh, don't mind about anything people have told you in the past. They may have told you uh, they want you to join their church. He did not preach church here. He preached Christ. That transforming power. And this night you are transformed. Cancel us. Can I see your hand? Okay. Yes. This area is finished. Can I see the flag here in the middle? Okay. It is done there. Yes, this role here. Okay, on my right hand side. On my right hand side, extreme right. Okay, finish up quickly. And let me see the flag up if you finish. Yes, please give them your correct address. I know it is done this way. The people here are done. Here is done. Even this role. I'm waiting for my right hand side. Yes, I know you will soon finish. Please just give your correct address. Give your correct name. And what is the name with which people know you in the quarter? Uh, maybe they know you as Pasteur. After writing your name, you should also put that name there. So that if we ask you, we ask for you, they will tell us. Or Grand Frère. I don't know the name. But just put it there so that we can be able to visit you. And continue to communicate with you. And how to continue with the Lord. Yes, I'm waiting for the counselors on my right hand side. Those online, please fill your correct form. Fill it and then you send it. Yes, the in front chair is over. Yes, at the back there. Okay, it is done. Now, everybody say now. And you cannot say now and you are sitting down. The power of God is about to be released. A time of celebration is coming. Pastor is up. Amen. It has come. For you. I can't hear you. God put a miracle in your life. You, you raise up one hand. You lay the other hand on yourself where you have been the problem. No doubt your healing will happen now. And after the final, amen. Check up. It's there. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name. You are a faithful God. You are a good God. You love everyone. And you have the willingness to heal, to deliver everyone. I pray, Lord, your miracle power will descend on everyone right now in Jesus' name. Change sickness to healing. Bondage to deliverance. Lord, I pray Miracle coming now upon every life. That insanity, madness, come out in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
deaf and dumb receive your hearing and your speaking clearly. Swelling come out of every part of your body. And yet come out in Jesus' name. Asthma be healed in Jesus' name. Backbone be healed in Jesus' name. Short hand, short leg, grow out in Jesus' name. Pain in your joints, arthritis, come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Demons tormenting life, harassing lives, you demons, get out in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, I command, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, every form of healing that your people need, do it now for them. To the right, to the left, to the back, to the front, in the middle, healing everywhere. Over the radio, over the television, online, everywhere. Supernatural, miracle, transformational healing in Jesus' name. Everywhere now. Everywhere now. Healing. Miracle. Deliverance, joy, testimony, demonstration of power for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. Check up yourself. Your miracle is there. 